Stanley Andrees, researcher in endocrinology, professor, advocate. The unlikely trajectory of your career has been an inspiration to many. You recall your youth in the Ferguson, Missouri area when bad decisions led to the criminal legal system and a prison term. It was in prison that you read a scientific paper on the progression of diabetes, a disease that has impacted your family and you established a career goal. Inspired by mentors, you changed lanes and found a new direction through prison education programs. Eventually, you earned a PhD and launched a career as a prominent endocrinology researcher and professor specializing in the treatment of diabetes. Your life is a stirring example of the value of a second chance and a reminder that one's past does not dictate their future. But there's much more to your story. Your journey has continued as you lead others from the challenges of incarceration to meaningful membership in society. As founder and executive director of Prison to Professionals, you have helped others to find the hope and motivation to chart a new course. You understand that opportunity, unlike talent, is not distributed uniformly, and that education can be the most important tool in transforming lives. It's an honor to recognize you today, not only for your career as a scientist, researcher, and academic, but for the work you do to extend opportunity to those seeking to reach their full potential. By the authority vested by the regents of the University of the State of New York and the trustees of Union College, and delegated by the trustees to me, I'm pleased to confer on you the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Thank you for this great honor. Dear 2023 graduates of Union College, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. It is such a great honor to be back here with you. Some of you may recall that I was here with you this past fall as was mentioned. I met with President Harris and he was moved by my story. But that's not why he invited me. He invited me because he saw how many of you were moved and motivated by my story. So thank you, President Harris, for the invitation and thank you, Dr. Brian Cohen, for the first invitation. I would also like to thank Chair Swidler, the trustees, our distinguished and honored guests, whom I had the pleasure of being introduced to just last night. I would also like to thank the faculty, staff, family, friends, and of course, you, the class of 2023. I want to take the personal privilege to thank my beautiful wife, Stephanie, the mother of our two adorable children, four-year-old Ashlyn Odette Hope Andrees, and 17-month-old William Edward Joseph Andres, who are jo joining me here today. And if you wouldn't mind waving to the audience to say hello. <clears throat> they are the hidden force behind all my innovative endeavors and my countless engagements. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want to give a quick shout out to Natalie Preveza, Chris Ringer and Dana Truini, graduates who stopped by my booth at a physiology conference in Long Beach. They came by to express their excitement for me speaking and to grab a free copy of my book. Thank you. Also to Julie Etkin, a graduate who connected with me on LinkedIn and shared that she is a second generation Union graduate as her father graduated from Union. Congratulations to you both and congrats to all the Fulbright Scholars, Goldwater Scholars, Gilman Scholars, and all the other awardees in the class of 2023. 
You've all heard the phrase, they can't take this away from me. It's not referring to the piece of paper. It's referring to this experience. You did this. You all did this. You all did this together. It's not about the piece of paper. It's about what the piece of paper signifies that you did. It's about the resilience. It's about the grit. It's about getting through COVID. It's about never giving up. It's about those late night parties, uh, I mean, late night studying that you might have done. In life, you may likely encounter people that will doubt you, people that will tell you you can't, people that will weigh you down, people that don't see your light, they don't see your energy. In life, you may likely encounter experiences that have every intention of breaking you, experiences that will bring you deep pain, experiences that will bring you to sobbing tears. These people and experiences are part of your destiny. These people and experiences are part of your journey. These people and experiences will help make you who you are. These disbelievers, I like to call them haters, are fuel to your flame. I've had my share of disbelievers in my life, but this particular one that I'm gonna tell you about, this one really topped the cake. This one thought that I should be locked in a cage for the rest of my life. Me, locked in a cage for the rest of my life. I was in my early 20s at the time, and no, uh, that was not like just last year. Um, I know I look like I could possibly be the student speaker. I know what it feels like to overcome incredible obstacles and disbelievers. I am a formerly incarcerated person with three felony convictions who was sentenced to 10 years in prison as a prior and persistent career criminal. I had a prosecutor, this disbeliever, this hater, tell me that I had no hope for change, no hope. She wanted to lock me in a cage for the rest of my life. Fast forward some time, I did my time, and I'm now Dr. Stanley Andres, endocrinologist, scientist, and professor at Howard University. endocrinologist and professor at Howard University College of Medicine, which I like to call the mecca of historically black colleges and universities. I'm a former faculty at Johns Hopkins Medicine, visiting faculty at Georgetown Medical Center, and held a visiting faculty position at Imperial College London in the UK. I have also recently written a number one new release in Educator Biographies book titled, From Prison Cells to PhD, It Is Never Too Late to Do Good. I know many of you had the opportunity to get copies when I was here in the fall. Uh, I encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to pick up a copy, um, to pick up a copy if you would like. From this time when I had this prosecutor who thought I had no hope for change, I would say that I changed a little bit from what that prosecutor was prophesizing those many years ago. Growing up in the Ferguson area, I got involved in making poor decisions at a very young age. I was arrested for the first time at 15 years old. By my early 20s, those poor decisions had exponentially multiplied, and I found myself sitting in front of a judge facing 20 years to life in prison for drug trafficking charges. The prosecutor painted this picture of me as this dangerous career criminal with no hope for change. The judge sentenced me to 10 years in a maximum security prison. I'd like to step back for a second. I had been under investigation for nine months leading up to a 50-man DEA raid where I had multiple assault rifles aimed at my head. I could have 
easily been Mike Brown laying there dead in the streets and all that would have been said was, oh, another young black thug selling drugs dead in the streets. Who really cares? Because black lives don't matter, right? I went into my incarceration just having been told that I was a career criminal. I internalized that and I believed it. However, I was fortunate to have this mentor step into my life who saw a different narrative. He saw a different trajectory and he began investing in that potential. During the first two years of my incarceration, my dad's health plummeted. He had a number of hospitalizations and surgeries and piece by piece, they began amputating his lower limbs up to his upper torso. He fell into a coma and ended up losing his battle with type two diabetes. This was this emotionally devastating event, but I used this devastation as inspiration. I read my first scientific article on diabetes while I was locked in a cage. Many of you are likely familiar with scientific articles and how every other word is something you've never heard of before. I didn't have Google or WebMD or ChatGPT. It took weeks to months to read through one article, but I plowed through dozens, becoming a jailhouse expert on endocrinology. This enabled me to escape prison. Although my body was locked in a physical prison cell, my mind was freely roaming around the human cell. This helped reshape my perspective of who I was. My mentor convinced me to continue my education. It took months to put together each application, but the rejections came in one after another, rejection after rejection after rejection. I applied to six programs. I was rejected from all but one. The one my mentor was on the admissions committee for at St. Louis University. St. Louis University gave me a second chance. Upon release, I was accepted into St. Louis University's PhD program, completed my PhD and MBA simultaneously in four years at the top of my class. Education was my game changer. <laughs> Education is your game changer as well. You have worked hard, sacrificed, and persevered through challenging times to earn your degree. As you leave Union College and embark on the next chapter of your lives, I want to remind you of a few important things. First and foremost, never stop learning. Your education doesn't end here today. It's just beginning. Whether you continue your formal education or not, make a commitment to lifelong learning. Read books, attend seminars, travel, try new things, and surround yourself with people who challenge and inspire you. Secondly, remember that success is not a destination, but a journey. Don't get so focused on achieving your goals that you forget to enjoy the journey. Embrace the ups and downs, the twists and turns, and the unexpected detours. I know all about unexpected detours, but these plot twists will shape you challenge you and make you stronger. And remember, failure is not a setback, but an opportunity to learn and grow. I want to share with you my journey on how I became an endocrinologist scientist working at one of the most prestigious medical institutions in our country. I've titled this part of my talk, Pathways to Greatness. I want to put the disclaimer up front that I do not believe that I have achieved greatness. I would argue against the possibility of achieving greatness. I am of the belief that greatness is a pursuit. Greatness is an accumulation of experiences along a corridor of successful and unsuccessful life experiences. Greatness is thus the culmination of an unending series of attempts at being a better you than you were the day before. Thus, one can aspire to be great. I would hope that all of you aspire to be great. How many of you have heard the quote, be not afraid of greatness? Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some are thrust into greatness. This is from William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. I want to stress a few things about this quote. Be not afraid of greatness. I think that is one of the biggest deterrents of success, being afraid of greatness. 
being afraid of that pursuit, acing that chemistry or calculus test, getting a high score on your interest exams to advance education, graduating with an advanced degree. I couldn't possibly do that. Me? No way. Not me. That is the thought process that belittles us. Many people miss out on their full potential because they fear greatness. We must move away from that thinking. We have to separate ourselves from that thinking. We have to thrust ourselves into greatness. We have to thrust ourselves into that pursuit. That is how we begin our pathways to greatness. People have often asked me, how did I end up as an endocrinologist scientist at places like Johns Hopkins and Howard University? I applied. My basketball coach once told me, you have to shoot in order to make the basket. It's OK to miss, but never stop shooting for your goals. Be resilient in your efforts. More specifically in how I got to Howard, I have this insatiable desire to do better every single day that I wake up. That is the pursuit. That is the pathway to greatness. I want to provide another quote for you. Change the game. What does that mean to you? To me, it means be extraordinary. Find the edge and push past it. Change the status quo. Be innovative. I encourage you all to change the game on your pathways to greatness. Thirdly, be a force for good in the world. Use your talents, skills, and education to make a positive impact on the world around you. You have a responsibility to use your privilege and power for the greater good. Whether you choose to volunteer in your community, work for a nonprofit organization, or start your, own social, start your own social enterprise, find a way to be a game changer in the world. Some people want to make money, and that's completely OK. For me, I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. I want to make the world a better place and I encourage you to do the same. During the Civil Rights Movement, hatred killed a president, a candidate, and a king. John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. These individuals believe so heavily in what's right that they risked their lives to do good. The evils of the world wanted to erase their efforts, but darkness cannot overcome darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot overcome hate. Only love can do that. I encourage you to bring love and light into our world. Lastly, never forget the people who helped get you where you are today. Take a moment to think of your parents, family, friends, mentors, and professors who supported and encouraged you along this way. You didn't get here alone, and you won't get to where you're going alone either. Cherish your relationships, cultivate new ones, and stay connected to the people who matter most to you. So one last thing before I leave the podium here. I myself uh, would like to cherish this moment. So I would like, if I can get the graduates to maybe raise their hands and give one good cheer of, we did it, as I take a selfie with you all, if you don't mind. <laughs> so can I get a cheer from the graduates and maybe the family as well? <laughs> Got it. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. To our future economists, engineers, biologists, psychologists, neuroscientists, mathematicians, lawyers, doctors, and all the great things that you all will become, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Please give our graduates a round of applause, and thank you all.